We are recording, Mayor. Okay, thank you. This is uh, budget deliberations for Monday, May 10th. Um, this is, uh, I think, our second deliberations, and um, hopefully we can get some guidance. Uh, we uh, tasked Mike O'Neill with some things uh, last week um, to follow up on. Matt, I did get your text. Sorry, it was a busy weekend uh, with everything going on, um, but I do appreciate you reaching out. Sure. And uh, and then I guess either following up with your caucus or, or watching the recording of it. Uh, so where do we begin? Um, I guess we're looking at, um, well, obviously tomorrow, a little bit of guidance on how to uh, proceed with um, the ARP funds, which is good. Uh, also wanted to see where we were with a 10% um, to 12% um, rainy day fund, or uh, um, I forget what we, we call it on there, but... Um, Fund balance. fund balance, Mayor. Is that what you mean? Yeah. Yep. Unallocated fund balance. Is that it? Uh, <clears throat> so let's see. Um, anything we want to dive right into or look for other additional savings? I know we kind of went and hit the big ones uh, for the departments. Um, and Sally is available if, if you wanna chat with her too. That's the 203 number. Thank you, Sally, for being on. I have a, I have a question, Mike, if I could. Sure. This is, uh, I guess, for Gary and Mike O'Neill. <clears throat> On your um, possible scenarios at the bottom of your pre Mike O'Neill review sheet, <clears throat> talk about uh, use of American Rescue Plan funds for infrastructure. Of course, we don't know yet what the restrictions are, but is it true that we think it's only going to be for capital use? And uh, <clears throat> that's part of the question. The other part is if it if it can be used for capital, you you have it being earmarked for the road fund reduction. Um, aren't we required to to use the half a mil road fund? You know, in the mill rate calculation, can we substitute? other funds for that or how would that work? Um, I'd have to go back and look to see if there's a requirement in the funding, um, but my assumption is you just then wouldn't charge the mill rate, the whatever it was, the 0.53 or whatever it is to get to that number. It wasn't a, a, a policy that was established where you have to use a, a half a mil for road repairs? Uh, I'll look, as I said, I can kind of look at the language and just get a legal interpretation. It is a vote. So my assumption is you are the policy making board. You could probably temporarily authorize that unless it's charter. Um, but if it's an ordinance or if it's set by an ordinance, you can uh, suspend it. And along those same lines, the the CREC hundred and forty thousand, um, and the uh, eighty seven thousand out of the bond premiums. Is that true that those two can also only be used for capital improvement projects? Yes, with the further restriction on the bond premium that it would be the those bonds were authorized for the high school. So it would have to be used for the high school. If it was used for capital projects versus offset of high school debt service. 
it seems like we we might have some available funds, but we're not able to use them in the in the right places. Is that everyone kind of agree with that, or is that, am I missing something here? We get two and a half million dollars, and we can only use it on infrastructure. That's not going to help us out of all of our problems. So there is. It looks like an what's called the final interim rule came out a little while ago today. Um, I haven't had a chance to rip into it completely because it's 150 pages and then there's like a summary sheet that's eight pages. Um, there may be some more flexibility in there than we first thought. Um, it might just put it on there as a, as a message. Um, there is, some there is some flexibility. It looks like it provides us the ability to help, you know, to do some small business development, to provide assistance to small businesses. There's some potential housing component if it meets certain statutory requirements. Um, so there may be an opportunity to, ex you know, just not just look at infrastructure in terms of bricks and mortar, but there might be some creativity we might be able to apply keeping in mind that we're gonna have other restrictions associated with it, right? So you gotta spend it down within three years and it might be additional rules. Again, it's 150 pages, just got it today. Um, although without email, it was quiet. There were still other things that um, I couldn't get into it. So we, we've got to take a read. And even after reading it, OPM, I'm assuming we'll set up some opportunities to ask them questions. Um, and, uh, and, and so we, you may have some flexibility more so than just within infrastructure or infrastructure might have some flexibility associated with it. Um, you just wanna be, you just wanna be considerate and consistent in how you're using it. What I gave you for scenarios, that was one way to do it. I mean, and I think I said this at the other meeting, frankly, there's probably other ways to use that funding to create a, um, a legacy fund or a better return on investment rather than just a one-time shot in the arm. There might be a way to create some um, ongoing revenue from it outside of just three years. So that's something now that the guidance is out, I can take a look into to see if we can do and, and bring it back to the commission. The other thing I, I think if you're holding on to your seat since everyone's seated, seated down, since everyone is seated, um, something I'm gonna mention um, in looking at the a recent um, update that came out from OPM and we still have to get clarification on this to make sure we're now reading it correctly but that 2.5 million dollars um, the way the sheet originally came across there was a tranche of funds for 2.5 and another one for 5 million I had originally thought the 5 million was this board of ed component um, now that we've gotten more information in it's quite possible that that 2.5 is ours and the 5 million might be ours for a total of 7 million. I am not confirming nor denying that fact until we talk to OPM and I know Mike has been trying to reach OPM um, uh, unsuccessfully today because everyone else is probably doing the same thing trying to get to them. So um, I'm telling you that not to scare you or get you overly excited, but just to be clear that, that there might be a larger sum of money coming our way than expected. And with that, I'll wait you wait for you to just get air back in your lungs. The, I want to go back to the crack uh, Northeast utilities. Um, I thought that I thought that was established to replace the tax revenue for that property. And so why is there a restriction on you can only use it for CIP? Anyone? Well, it was my understanding, and I wasn't uh, on the council for when that was passed. Is it strictly for CIP or can it be used for economic development? And by that, I mean, could that be part of, you know, could we use that for the facade program? It's looking at the ordinance right, right now. So 
The monies in the trust, which would be considered interest earnings, may be used by the town for the exclusive purpose of funding capital improvements and non-recurring expenses in the town of Weathersfield. Which I would believe I would take non-recurring expenses to mean CNEF. I'll get a I'll get a link to that up for you in the chat in a moment. There you go. Fourteen dash twenty four. A. Mike, is the uh, is the res or is this trust used in determining sort of the ability for a town to pay and let's say you know when union negotiation or arbitration and stuff like that, or is that not considered part of our lack um, for lack of a better term ability to pay or wealth of the town or how do you want to define that? I don't know. I don't Any insight know. on that, Gary? Could you rephrase the question? <laughs> sure. It appears, I mean, I'm, I was looking at the e-code that Mike just put up, it yeah. talks about a trust and, and the holding of money and the investment of it, you know, our, our ability to derive some of its uh, income, you know, to run our operating. So is that trust, is the amount of that trust or the ability of the money that we get from that trust, is that used as a factor in our ability to pay when we talk about uh, when we do, we talk about union contracts and we go into arbitration for them. I think it's part of the analysis to determine um, labor costs. I guess I'm trying to figure out how we're tying the two together, right? Because I see one is vested in any investment which public trust funds may be lawful. All income derived from such shall be credited to the trust to become part thereof. I don't know if I would tie the two right to anything related to the to negotiations or otherwise. Okay. Gifts, grants, or other non interest. Uh, You're not, I mean, the answer won't be within the, the statute. It's how. Yeah. Well, I'm tr the statute's kind of telling me how you can use it, uh, or at least how you can access it. Um, but it, is your thought to use the available funds to offset costs? No, it was. Uh, don't. <laughs> if you try to think where my mind's going, you'll <laughs> you'll run yourself in circles. Um, no, I was. I mean, I noticed the trust. There's a funding source here. I know Deputy Mayor was talking about the use of various funds. Um, you know, in in infrastructure, so I I didn't understand if we were doing you know do a huge infrastructure investment or a huge investment into this trust. Um, would that then reduce our negotiation position as we continue to uh, enter into you know labor negotiations? 
No, nah, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't connect the two. Um, you know, if 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 you somehow were able to use the trust to generate, you know, an, an incredible offset in revenue, and the town suddenly had a, you know, a huge influx of cash. Yeah, I'm, I'm assuming the the unions would say, well, no, you you're flush with cash, and we want access to it. Yeah, they might not. I mean, they might be considerate of it. I'm not saying they're out for blood, but it's just one of those things. It's you know, it's. They would make the argument if we weren't in a tough fiscal or financial um, condition uh, to say you you can pay us more. Um, we're not in that condition, so they're not asking aggressively, at least. But you could, you know, to go one step further, you could use those funds, not just the interest. You could use those funds to um, stimulate economic development. Right? It's a leveraged pool of cash that you could use for a project, um, as long as the math, my opinion, as long as you could pencil out the math to say, okay, we're earning, and I'm throwing a number out, 5% interest on it, that makes us X amount per year. If you use those funds to stimulate the economy somehow through bringing a business in or developing another parcel, would that same amount be returned in tax revenue every year or more? That would potentially be a good and creative use of those funds because you're not actually losing, you're actually gaining but it would need, uh, what, seven out of nine vote um, authorization. And that's just for, that's the principle. Or? Correct. Well, <clears throat> for the print to touch the principle, you would need <clears throat> seven out of nine, right? Where are we? Yep, no less than seven members of the town council, the monies in the trust, which would be considered principal gifts, grants, or other, other non-interest earnings may be used by the town for the exclusive purpose of funding capital improvements and non-reoccurring expenses of the town. Okay, but to use the, the principal, we can use the principal as we see fit for CIP or CNEF. Correct. With yeah, uh, no, the, the the interest, the super no. majority, but yes. Super earnings. Okay. There it and is. How much did that? What did we have for interest last year, Mike? If I remember, you said ninety thousand typically. Yeah, it's typically ninety. Two years ago it was a little less than that, so we we made up the difference in the following year. But we always, I think we've always gotten the 90. And what do we typically do with that 90? It goes to the CIP reserve. So it's, the available, reserve. it's available for uh, to transfer to any project. Got it, okay. Tom, did you have anything further? No. Any other <clears throat> uses for it? No, I just was, was concerned that we were going to have too much money only available for CIP, CNEF. If we were to use the, you know, if we can use the uh, 2.5 uh, American Rescue Plan money. Okay. Um, again, keeping it in mind, if you use it this one way, it's <clears throat> it doesn't necessarily help you next year. It's just a, an idea of doing, you know, how you could do it. I'm just trying to come up with a plan to keep the taxes <laughs> residents flat. I would certainly rather put it all away use the interest, but that may not be possible. And I think right now they're saying you have three years to ex expend it, although I'd be curious to speak with OPM as to when the clock starts on that three. Is it from the time we were awarded it, from the time they distribute it? You know, where's the... Does it have to be completely spent out or is it just committed? I 
the town calendar, Gary, at $6,000, is that strictly printing cost? Yeah, I believe we do the layout and everything inside. Oh, they might help us with the layout, but I think that's part of the printing. I think we do most of the work. Um, in previous years, we've had, we've paid someone to take our pictures. We kind of did our own thing this year because of COVID creatively. So, but I believe that's just straight printing. And how many do we have printed up and then how many do we have typically returned back to us or recycled at the end of the year? Not sure on the recycled. Um, let me see if I can look up the number. I think Pete's idea, when you look at my cuts, I think Pete's idea was to just cut back on the number. Right. I want to make sure we get enough information out to people, but if if the world is transitioning more and more onto online, getting their information. I mean, we do, in the same bracket, you have the Great Elm, which we were supposed to use as more of a informational platform electronically to get us further away from having to print so many I have, a, I have a question for Gary on uh, the sheet that we're looking at. The B column says requested. Is that, I, I thought that was requested by the department head. Is that correct? Yeah. So if you're on the department operating, that column should be hidden. Right. And it, when it, when it was originally created that created by me, that was requested. But the problem is once I started doing the different recommendations, you know, possible scenarios for you, those may no longer line up. Because uh, like the calendar we were just talking about, the way it reads, it wasn't even requested, but then you put it in. Right. So when I built this sheet originally, I had asked department heads to give me certain levels of cuts. And so then I took that for the creation of my budget and I picked certain line items so when I originally did it, they might that that might not have been touched at all in my cut. Okay. But now we're going into other rounds and I have to kind of scrape up money. So I start going deeper into theirs. So then it got added. I was trying to get a better idea of <clears throat> what you've already, you know, didn't seem right for me to go after, you know, one department and say, oh, you know, we want to suggest you cut $30,000 when you've already taken 60 or 90 out from them, you know, and I can't really tell which, which line you would have taken that out of. So. Yeah, I can go back and figure out a way because the the black binder does have it like Mike was kind enough to put like town manager cut whatever I can see if I have a kind of a cheat sheet I can add did, did each department do that or just some departments put the town managers cut um I want to say almost all of them provided me the different levels that I asked for but it, uh, but it, did it get annotated in that in the binder it yeah. seemed like some departments put it in there. Yeah, it should be. A black binder is missing. Oh, it's over here. Yeah, I believe it. Yeah, not. Um, not other than, there might be a few that escaped a cut because it just didn't, you know, didn't make sense or it was going to be or you know it was large like IT equipment and software or townwide radio it's it's almost too difficult to, to carve it which is why the larger number is in there um, but most of them have some kind of marking that says town manager reduced by X mm
the and then we got Sally on the call here, but under physical services, municipal solid waste reduction, how did we come up with, or how did you, Gary, come up with that roughly a $50,000 cut? I was looking at the, so keep in mind, we, we went up because the dollar amount went up. And then I was looking at where we kind of were averaging over a period of years in terms of waste. And I just multiplied it by um, the, the change in the increase. I multiplied that by where we've typically been falling um, in terms of what the total tonnage is. And so that's, you know, and it, as Sally has pointed out, it's, it's risky because you just don't know because one year it could be higher, one year it could be lower. You throw an average in there, you, you just don't know, right? We could have a year where we change how we do trash. Since things are closing in July, since Mir is closing in July, I'm kind of hoping it'll be consistent over the next 12 months. Um, so again, it's, there's not a ton of science to it. It's just, it's math. It's kind of like, I, I don't know. I don't know if residents will throw out more trash or businesses will throw out more trash in this year. So I kind of just picked up what I thought was a number based off of where we were statistically or historically, not statistically. And again, just like anything else, we're, you know, there's, we're, we're hoping that's what it'll be, or if it exceeds it, it doesn't exceed it by much. <clears throat> and with Willard and Mill Woods open, we typically do an extra week at Mill Woods. Have has that been an ongoing practice or? No, it's, uh, it's occasional. Um, I think last year we ended up doing it because the season didn't get started until late. So it was really the same amount of time. It's just, we went later. The year before, I wanna say the two years before, we definitely did not. Um, but I believe three years ago we did because I remember the dog swim being later. A lot of it, you know, it's it's the residents like it and appreciate it, especially because of the way school and camps run out. Uh, the problem for us is occasionally you'll have our lifeguards aren't around because they're all gone back to college. Right. But we we've, we've figured out a way to make it happen. Kathy's very creative. Um, it usually has a decent crowd towards the end. Those, those are some hot days in August, I'll tell you. Those are some hot days. Well, and I love my children, but by that time of year, it's kind of like, okay, go swimming. <laughs> I, I have a question that uh, was brought up at the last um, budget deliberations about, uh, we had asked about the townwide radio voice logger and its importance and what is, I think you, you know, we know what it is, but how urgent it is that that be replaced or purchased. I haven't had a chance to talk to John yet, but I did, um, we did appropriate 48,000 for that two years ago in fiscal 20. So I did track that down, but I just need to talk to John Richter and, and kind of get a thorough understanding of, of how that fits in and the, you know uh, how important it is I mean obviously you know we had a, this idea two years ago right and we don't have it yet so I'll, I'll track him down on that I just haven't had a chance to do that yet Uh, custodial summer help and, you know, and this is what goes back to the shared services, uh, agreement with board of ed, but it's my understanding that boards will be getting either 
part of the ARP funds or a separate fund for summer enrichment programs? And if they are going to be held at schools, I know we provide the summer cleanup for it, but could that be used through Board of Ed funds? I, Sorry, Mike Reed. I understand that, you know, they don't, coming from, you know, a couple meetings ago, it didn't seem like the Board of Ed was willing to part ways with any of their money to provide any of the uh, physical services part of, you know, what we would get for AR or what they would get for ARP funds. But it just seems like, you know, if we're going to be doing more with the schools for the summertime, that they should reimburse the town for some of the expenses that we're going to have for summer cleanup. I know we always have a line item for it, if I'm not mistaken. But um, is that number of 22,440 inflated because of what we did last year? Um, we can ask Sally to explain. I don't know if she adjusted the number upward for it, but I think, you know, it's a reasonable question. Sally, do you want to pop on? I don't know if I have the breakdown of last year's in front of me. I have the total number, but not the... And... I think she's trying to unmute star six. Actually, I can look up the other one while she's trying to do that. I almost have to go back two years just to I mean, last year it was the same 22,440. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's pretty consistent about 22,000. Hang on, she's getting back on. Sally, are you there? Yes, I am. Okay, just while you were trying to do that, I just went and looked at the last three years. And it looks like the 22,000 is pretty consistent year over year. Yes, or, in fact, or, well, we, yes, um, because we um, hire people, we've actually decreased um, as the minimum wage has gone up, we've actually decreased the amount of hours we have people working um, in order to stay to that schedule um, because we have to bring them on usually in June. So we're, we have, you know, we, we bring them on July and then have to budget for the next month, that month at the end of the year, the way the fiscal year falls for us. We try to budget it out so that we have money available. But these, um, the summer help is used to take all of the furniture out of the rooms, clean all of the furniture, clean all of the, you know, aid the custodians in cleaning all of the rooms. And as we've been told by the Board of Education, they're going to be using web a lot this summer. So that's going to make cleaning it. Um, very intensive and labor intensive. They're also going to be using the Y campus going to be back at Hammer. So we use uh, staff there. And then any, also they utilize um, parts of the high school. So we have a feeling we're going to be going back into rooms on multiple times, depending on how uh, Mr. Emmett utilizes the school rooms.
do you think there's going to be an increase to that 22,000 or no no we we will budget we budget our time to that number so that's based on students working five or usually it's students working five hours a day for five days um you know throughout the throughout the summer and then um then that's starting july 1st and then we hold you know some back so that they can hopefully start in june but we always as I said we we work it to that number okay and then so they, i don't know they're big labor that just keeps they move furniture all summer long okay so it doesn't look like it would be reimbursable from the Board of Ed for any increased costs due to their summer enrichment programs. I it's, have asked, yeah, I've asked the Board of Ed about the opportunity to use any funding and did not receive a positive response from them. Okay. Uh, while you're on the custodian one position, is that an unfilled position right now in our budget or in, you know, our, you know, um, this past no. year? No, that is, that is a occupied position. Okay. Is that, so Gary, why do you have that on this list? Uh, uh, council scenarios. Yeah, because it's all the way. Well, it's it's towards the end, but when you look at what the impact is um, to the budget, trying to find cost savings, well, it's not necessarily my preference. You have to look at where you can impact and reallocate resources. So, which causes the least impact? And this was kind of a recommended. Uh, or a conversation that I had with Sally as to, okay, where can we realign or reallocate resources based off of need? If it has to be one position over another, which one makes the most sense? And this one kind of raised to that level. But it's a currently staffed position. Oh, at this time. At, at the time. So it's, we did have some recent movement within the, custodial side, we had someone who left, so there might be an opportunity to reallocate resources. Okay, so we have, we are down one custodian right now. What did we do with that transfer, Sally? Uh, we were going to move forward with it because of the school schedule, um, okay. but maybe we can, we can hit the pause button on it. So it's either a maintainer or custodial staff. And essentially what we've recognized is we can reallocate the resource of the custodial staff potentially better than the maintainer. Absolutely. Okay. And Cornfest and fireworks are already, I mean, that would be in FY22. No corn, well, we don't know if there's going to be a Cornfest this year or not. I thought they canceled it for indefinitely. Indefinitely. Something yeah. different. Yeah, they were going to look into whether or not it made sense to do it or if they needed to re- redo it in a different way. And we typically do fireworks first week of June. Yep. And again, that's Chamber of Commerce as well. Chamber, yeah, Chamber raises the funds for it. We support it. 
There hasn't been any talk of fireworks this year. Not, not that I'm aware of. Okay. I think some of the neighborhoods just took that over on their own. Closer yeah. to the other end, but yeah. Okay. And Sally, you're comfortable with larvicide, like a $12,000 cut in larvicide? Is that the tablets that go in the uh, catch the, base? The base. Yeah. I'll answer that for her. No, she's not comfortable with cutting any. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, I'm I'm not I'm not comfortable with you know cutting any of it. But um, again, those are more quality of life programs than essential services that we provide for the operation of the town. Okay. But if there's no corn fest and there's no fireworks, then we do save because we would not spray for mosquitoes. Yep. And refresh my memory, we did not spray last year. We sprayed an old weathers field. Okay. Um, because there was a, an outcry um, of people saying that it was um, hurting, um, you know, the, as I said, the quality of life, especially around Main Street, you know, the businesses, things around, things around there. Yeah, with the outside, the increase in outside dining and trying to get things, you know, keep things open, it was a lot of people were outside yeah. and. Yep, yep. utilizing parks. Um, you know, and, and things like that. And that's also where we do, we do some spraying and uh, some larvicide around bodies of water. So in Millwoods Park around there too. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going through. Uh, overtime at the Board of Ed. And do we, is that 90,000 reflective of what we did for 2020 or is it reflective of years past? Based on years past when the schools were at normal and full capacity, a lot of the overtime that we had spent previously was um, responding to mechanical breakdowns um, that we needed to bring people in, you know, a lot of cleanup, a lot of times when, you know, a, a water pump would go or other things would go and we needed to really try to bring in um, staff so that we didn't receive more damage. Um, and then also the staff to make repairs. And parks summer help, can that be done with uh, existing staff or do we rely heavily on the uh, summer help? We rely very heavily on the summer help. Um, our summer staff is really stretched to the limit because as I need to, you know, just kind of remind people, these are the staff members who this is their busiest season, yet they also plow snow. And so my staff um, gets, you know, depleted during the summer. They have, a lot of them do have families and so they have to take time, but we have a lot of fields that we have to bring up, our parks, all of the town buildings, all of the landscaping around all of our town buildings, all of the mowing of all of our properties. And we'll, we utilize the summer help 
to do a lot of the things like weed whacking in and around the cove, around all of the fence lines for all of our for all of our fields so that they don't look unkept. They do, uh, you know, we have one seasonal in doing trash pickup all day. That's all he does is trash pickup. Um, these people are vital to making the town look good. And then you get a time period like we've had the past three weeks where the grass is just growing at, at, at a huge rate of speed and we're falling behind because of it because then we get rain like today or the, like yesterday, our staff needed, you know, tomorrow they're going to be trying to bring baseball fields up because we had to cancel games today, mm-hmm. which takes them of mowing and things like that. So those people are really vital to, to the organization to make the town look good and to function properly for our regular business plus all of, you know, park and rec programs and school programs because they support all of the school fields. Gotcha. Um, the, you brought up the point of the summer or seasonal um, trash pickup. Is that the gentleman who drives in the, uh, the Jeep with the trailer? Yes. Is he currently? All day. And is, that's ongoing right now, too, correct? Yes. We, right now, because we don't have summer help, we utilize one of our regular maintainers uh, to do that, our maintainer ones. Once we bring on the summer help, because they uh, we do a background check on their driver's license and their they have the availability to to drive a town vehicle, we utilize one of the summer students. Then we take that maintainer one and put that person uh, on a lawnmower or lining fields or doing something that takes more um, more finesse than uh, driving around doing the trash pickup. Okay. The only reason I bring that up is sometimes in the summertime on the green, I do see that same Jeep with a driver and somebody who picks up the the garbage cans. So there's typically two people in that Jeep, at least on the the green pickup. So sometimes, yeah, yeah, sometimes in the summer, very early in the morning, they'll uh, two people will go around and try to just get to all of the parks as early as possible. And they just try to double up and get it done as quickly as possible. Okay. So do another park later on in the day. By himself. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. I just want to make sure if we're utilizing staff and I'm sure you are, um, that you know we don't have a driver and somebody to pick up if throughout the year we're just using a driver um right but yeah it makes we, it quicker for them to get it done especially in the height of you know outdoor recreation if they can get the garbage picked up and then move that maintainer off to uh, a separate duty and then put the seasonal to work yeah yes and then what we also have seasonals going around with the people who do mowing so that the seasonal worker does the weed whacking while the other person may be on the mower. So you may see someone on a mower, but that uh, on the Broad Street Green, but then one or two seasonals doing all of the weed whacking around all of the benches and trees and um, beds and things like that. Yep. Now I'm, that's how I paid for my extracurricular activities in college doing that <laughs> so. hey mike i did have one question and yeah. I don't know if this has been asked before sally do you have any concerns about the chlorine crisis and what impact that's going to have on costs uh, so far, we are we're good, um, and our suppliers have said that they'll be able to supply us with what we need. Um, as to the rising costs, right now you know, we buy our chemicals and things off the state the state bid list. Um, how much that's going to go up? I don't know. I do, I do know there's a lot of price gouging going on right now, you know, just from chlorine yeah. tablets. 
So I'm just curious how that's going to affect. Hopefully, because of the way the state bid contracts go, by the time that those are up for renewal, this crisis will have subsided a bit. Okay. Anybody else have any questions for Sally? I want to belabor physical services. Um, and actually, let me look at the binder, see if I had any notes from there. Oh, facility dude. Now, was that that's, something? And how does our that life work right now? You guys just aren't talking to each other with. Um, no, well, facility I, dude. Facility dude is our work order system, and it is the lifeline of what we do, because our our people don't all have you know, phones and things. So we have to be able to have a tracking system for work orders. And the way the system is inputted, each of the subdivisions of my department gets their work orders. And um, that is how they plan their work throughout the week. Also, people in town like Park and Rec can go in and put in a work order for work that they need done today, tomorrow, next week, next month, reoccurring work that needs to get done. It's the only way we can manage the amount of work. And if you look in the narratives, I mean, we do thousands of work orders every year. It's how people report potholes. It's how we, um, you know, we do tree work gets reported. It's also how we record it. So if someone calls and says, you know, I reported this two weeks ago, we can go back and say, yes, we have a record or no, we don't. That program is absolutely vital to us because otherwise, when, before we started to use it, you know, it's going back to writing a work order on a post-it note. Um, and this way we can run reports, we know what needs to get done. It's, it's, it is the lifeline of how we function because as I said, also, you know, with our staff not having tablets or, or phones, it's the way that we give them work. We print out a work order and give it to them to do. They can then write any notes. For example, if there is a problem with um, a water leak or, you know, a water fountain, the plumber can work on the work order, close out his section, and then forward the work order to the carpenter because the carpenter has to fix the wall that the plumber needed to cut. So it's the way that we track our work. Gotcha. We had a line item of 3000 last year with an increase of 7,500 this year. No, oh. it, it stayed consistent. And, okay. The 3000 may have been for the LTA, that was the asset management program. For the vehicles? Yeah, it falls under the admin heading, and then the 7,500 comes from the school facilities. Well, there's there's two. We pay for school, we pay for two different, pay for facility dude, and we pay for school dude, because they're two separate work order systems one is used solely in the schools, and that's how everybody who's in a school reports a maintenance problem. And, and that's what it costs for our module. And then the facility dude is the town side of the work order system. But the schools have been using school dude for probably 10 or 15 years by now. And they integrate how they schedule rooms, and um, there's one other module they use. And I don't know if it's for budgeting or something else through school, dude. Okay. Uh, 
so I guess I'm stumped though. It's an increase of seventy five hundred dollars. What does that extra seventy five hundred dollars do? Something must be awry because seventy five hundred dollars has been the cost of the module since we implemented the module. So I don't. It may be that we appropriated it again correctly this year, where last year when things were just um, for the school side, they were lumped into building supplies or other things like that. As we have become more proficient in understanding the budgets of the schools, we've put expenditure expenses into the correct line items. All right, so Gary, if you wanna take a look at the black binder under physical services, section. What account number? If you have yours, five two two five two 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 zero. Yep. Contractors, sidewalks, lawns, right. snow. Okay. Right. The the seventy five hundred is the school dude part of um that's our worker system. If you had looked years prior. We didn't know um, what that was going to be. So again, we lumped it into, you know, building supplies or something else like that. This is just breaking it out to give it a more granular understanding of, of the budget. Okay. Yep. <clears throat> just looking at last year's, that's, that's correct. We had 10,500 last year? No, it was. No, it's if you look, 10,500 actually is 3,000 goes towards contractors that we have to hire to do sidewalks when we have to do code enforcement when the people don't do their, um, when they don't shovel snow or when the grass gets too high. That's the 3,000. So if you take the 3,000 and the 7,500, that's how you get your 10,500 number. Okay. So there's no, is there a change or no change from last year, Gary? There's a change, but it's in different areas is kind of what I was saying. In other words, what, what seems to have happened is when they first Try to. I hope I'm not reiterating what she just said, but basically, is every year that we do this, we learn more and more where the line items belong. So before it was kind of lump sum, right? And when we took yep. it over from the board of ed, so every year we start to learn. Okay, how do you break this down so it's its own line item, or it really belongs over here versus over there? So what she's saying is that three thousand, the ten thousand, ten thousand five hundred. The year before was just in different areas. We've moved it around and say, okay, you know, last year's contract, sidewalk, lawn, and snow was 3,000. The second else was 7,500. Now she's combining them into one and saying, Got okay, 10,500. So if you look somewhere else, there's going to be an offset of that 7,500. 7, that line item has now been eliminated. Right. I think the way she and Sally, I'm just flashing back to like March. The way she described it yep. to me, before you say anything, look at where the bottom line is and understand exactly. that we've moved here, you know, column or, or this row here is no longer existing. It's now added over here or somewhere else it's been subtracted. Absolutely correct. Got it. You see that in that same category, if you go all the way up, um, you know, the very first one, it's, it's um, and BOE train agreement. Again, it's not a new $10,000. It's a $10,000 that last year was in. Um, Somewhere a, out of maintenance budget, out of maintenance. Exactly. Budget. Right, where this year we wanted to actually be represented where it should be in the budget. And it's the same thing with the with the school dude and with the, the contractors under professional services. Okay. And just to clarify, we're not, when we have to 
mow a lawn or, or, or clear a sidewalk, we then send those charges up and there's liens and other things. We're not just mowing someone's lawn or, or removing snow because we're doing someone a favor. They actually get charged for that. Okay. Uh, I'm just looking to see any other notes. Um, we do have a boiler repairs line item. And is that all schools or all buildings? Just simply repairs that's not replacing of anything? Correct. Okay. Unfortunately, our elementary schools are old and need a lot of upkeep. Uh, and then chemicals for pools goes up nine nine thousand. Uh, I think it's what number are you? What uh, five two two? Nope, five three 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 five. Chemicals, drugs, lab supplies. Okay, if you look, if you look, you have to again go up. That's the tablets for the catch basins. That was six thousand. Um, permitting, um, larvicide, um, chemicals for pools. Nine thousand of that is the high school pool. Okay, so that's a that is that's a consistent in, that's a consistent charge, which again similar to the school dude. We're just getting better at at noting where the expenditures are. Okay. Gotcha. So are, so are these technically increases or will we see an offset somewhere else? You see an offset somewhere else. And Gary, where for, would we see that offset? For example, under 53345, um, building supplies BOE, it was 82,617 last year and this year it's 76,000. Mm -hmm. All right, so again, looking at that total number for that, it was 118,000 total in that line item last year. It's 112,000 this year. Gotcha, okay. So, so it's not- I could make a recommend, uh, offer a recommendation here. Why don't I, prepared analysis of just that that for, for furthermost right hand column where it isolates mm -hmm. facilities I'll take the the non-personnel costs so and I'll just do a line by line comparison to the adopted budget this year versus what's being proposed here because I think it is hard to see we're just we're just adding more detail sort of pulling numbers out of those lumps if you think back 3 years ago I forget if the number was three million or what it was, but we just took we just took the full amount that was in the board of ed budget and put it in, and really didn't know where to put it, other than you tell. Exactly. So, but let me do let me do that for you. That's easy enough to do. Just to 
just a side-by-side -side comparison of what you're looking at in that column in the black binder and what, what that looked like for the adopted budget in 21. Okay. Just yeah. the total. So you, it'll just, and again, I can, I'll do personnel, but we can, should probably kind of think of those things separately, personnel and non-personnel. And just, I think it'll be easier to see just in, you know, on with what? that little detail. Because you don't have yeah, that, you, the actual you don't have that is. that org isolated, you know, for for the twenty one. The, the twenty one column is everything, so it's yeah. hard. To, it's 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 not easy to to do that analysis this way. Yeah, right. Like I just flipped through it quickly, and you could see where they've dropped significantly in certain areas. It'll just be easier if it's all on one page. Gotcha. It, it, I want to. I guess yeah, a better reflection of where that five hundred eighty-nine thousand increase is. And if there's anywhere we can trim some of that five eighty-nine out of. Because going back to something that was discussed previously on the budget sheets, it does show where the town manager has already made some deductions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this has always been a question of mine, but the, um, what is it, the Little Red Schoolhouse on Wells Road? Yes. What's the, yep. what's the actual line item for what we do there? I know electricity is in there. It really just goes under, um, uh, town repairs. Um, just look. And what is, I guess, what would the cost be to keep? Well, under five two, uh, if you look at five two two seven five repair and maintenance, property and equipment, building upkeep, we usually pay for things out of um, the five thousand dollars that the trades utilizes there. We haven't incurred a lot of expenses there. We've done some painting a couple of years ago. We redid the roof, but it's such a small roof that our, our maintenance staff was able to do it. So we pay for it out of the general trades um, money under repair and maintenance under, um, again, if you look above 52275. Okay. Repairs and maintenance 240. Okay. Uh, no, if you go up a little bit more, it'll say, um, it says, uh, where are we? I'm not, um, building upkeep 5,000. Okay, got it. Okay. Do we have any revenue from that building or pre-COVID? Pre not that I know of, no. We've never pre received any. I think the art art league uses it, don't they? Yeah. Just like we su we supply um, maintenance for Keeney and Old Academy too. And that's the historical society. Yep, and the Standish House. Yes. Yeah. So the only thing we really see revenue from is the transfer station. We don't see any revenue from us. Uh, well, oh yeah, you meant you said Standish House, Lucky Lose. How about Solomon Wells House? No, that's all park and rec. That's okay. We don't, oh yeah, obviously. Rent all of it and all that, okay. We do the maintenance, but we don't see the revenue from it. Right. Okay. Any other questions for Sally? Okay. Thank you, Sally. Thank you. Okay, so we'll look at the, um, 
council scenarios a little bit deeper. Um, any big ticket items that anybody on this call would like to discuss? And then Gary, when do you think you would get some information on that possible additional 5 million? And again, can you just reiterate what, where do you think it's coming from? There, the way the most recent, or the way the guidance was presented, um, there's a, a local, I'm trying to picture how they worded it. I think it was like local allocation and county allocation. Um, and the county, basically that the way they broke it out, now I'm realizing the county allocation is going to come through the town, uh, come to the town as well. Um, you know, once, once we can get the confirmation from OPM, um, I think the bigger question is if we do have that amount of money, then we have to look to the guidance to see how we can use it. So it's kind of a two part. We might hear from OPM tomorrow. Yes, that's true. I can confirm you're getting seven plus million dollars just specific to you, not to the Board of Ed side. But then being able to understand, relay the guidance, um, that's probably going to be a back and forth. My assumption is OPM is going to have probably a webinar or at least CCM is going to get involved with them. So there, there's two parts. I could find out, as I said, tomorrow we get it. How we use it is kind of the devil in the details conversation. And then I'm probably going to need some time to come back with staff to figure out how to make a recommendation to you. Um, the, you know, what some scenarios might look like, what's the best return on investment, <clears throat> then be prepared to answer questions. So that's probably a much longer turn time. Um, and then looking at schedules for when we can meet again is, is uh, probably important. Okay. Debt service stays the same this year, uh, Mike O'Neill. Yep. Well, we've got the the eighty seven thousand to work with. Yeah. Premium. Mike, Mike, did you have a chance to look at the uh, collection rate? I have not yet. And refresh our memory memories on that eighty seven thousand. What is that? So that's, there was about 3.6 million uh, that we received in conjunction with the, the bond sales for the high school. Yep. It was above, above the principal amount that was borrowed. And, and we can only use it for a certain. We can use it in two ways. We can reduce our interest payments on school related debt, or we can use it for uh, capital projects for the, for the high school. It really has to be used. It's it's proceeds from the bonds, despite right. the fact that it's it's premium. It's it's proceeds under the authorization for the renovation of the high school. So they have to be used in conjunction with that authorization. What do we have for capital expenses for the high school in the in the budget? Nothing, nothing. I don't think there's anything. <clears throat> so really we can only use it to reduce, uh, which one is the high school, the 2000? There's three of them. It's there's the, the interest we pay each year is, is um, well beyond the yeah. premium that we have.
can we we can't use it on um, high school IT equipment? You know, actually, we're done with that this year, right? Yeah, you're looking at the debt service. Yeah. Yep. The, those are those two leases are are done. Okay, so we can use it on principal payment. I assume it's 14A and 16A and B. Correct. Okay. So is there an idea where you would want to use it, Mike? Interest payment? Yeah. Correct. On the 40, any one of those, 44, 66, 277, or 303? Yeah, we just, we, uh, it doesn't matter. We drill those. We, when we set the budget up, we, we budget each principal and interest for each of the bond issues. And so we'll just reduce one of those you know, by the amount of premium that we're using. Got it. So. That's an easy one. No brainer. Yeah. Uh, I'm just looking. Some other things we could do. We're working on, uh, I, I got to finish a conversation with the auditors about the coronavirus relief fund money that we received this year. I think what we can do with that is we can put it in, uh, we just parked it in the, in the general fund, you know, when we deposited the funds, but um, we'll put that in a special revenue fund where we can we can use it against, you know, qualifying items in this budget. Now that's just, that's the conversation I need to finish with the auditors is just what, what if any restrictions there are on those funds. So that was roughly 300,000 from which uh, we're going to pay the 23,000 to the health district. Yeah. So the rest of that's left. Um, you know, and I think available again, I just need to finish the conversation. You know, that, that was a, that was a situation where we submitted a detailed an itemized claim through the end of September, we got the reimbursement 60 some thousand. And then in December, they just gave us the rest and just said, you don't have to submit any paperwork, just, you know, all of the money's yours. Okay. We so, we, so it's ostensibly as a reimbursement, but it's a reimbursement for something we haven't itemized and frankly um, haven't incurred to that level. Got it. So it's just, it's a, it's a, it's an odd, you know, it would seem to be unrestricted funds, but I, I need, I need to confirm that with the auditors just so that, you know, we need to resolve that now and not when we're being audited in, in a year and a half. Mm-hmm. Okay, so get us guidance on that. It's roughly, if I'm looking, is the CARES Act relief um, 335,600 minus the 26 we gave to the health district. That's right. Roughly 310,000 we have, hopefully no, no direction on how to spend it. We can just spend it. Yeah, I just need to, again, have that, confirm that. Okay. But it's, it's already in the general fund though, you said, correct? Well, I mean, it's, it is, but it, we can put it wherever we want. We just, when we deposit the funds, we wanna, you know, we wanna record revenue somewhere, but it's, 
it's not final until we close the books. So we can just reverse it out of there and, and put it where it belongs. You know, it's sort of general funds a fine place for it, but it doesn't, you know, you can use it towards, you know, it would lapse to fund balance, right? And you can use it that way. So does the 598 go up by that amount then? That the surplus that you're projecting? Uh, that that number was just the projection on the expenditure side. You know, so separate from revenues. So we so we're gonna well there'll be a pickup on the revenue side too. It's just a question of we gotta settle that. Um, that's the biggest item. And then just look at, you know, how much of the two million that's appropriated this year we need to use because we have favorable balances on in the tax accounts where we typically do, you know, where we're where we're careful to to budget those. So by my figuring, you've got a little over a million dollars of fund balance to work with, assuming no lapsing funds on either revenues or expenditures. That's just, there's a million for sure. We'll sharpen the pencil, you know, and get a, a, a better idea of what we think would lapse. Um, you know, we got to deal with the fire truck repair and, and, you know, this issue with the, with the coronavirus relief fund money. Um, but there's certainly a million to use before you get into the below 10%. And so a million is 2.3 million is one mil. So you're looking at less than less than half a mil of, of pickup with that. You know, and that's again, we'll figure out the, the you know, it's probably gonna be a little more than a million. And that that's on top of the 12 million that we have already. That's 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 the amount you can use and not be below the 10%, um, which is the top end of, of the fund balance policy. Fund balance policy says should have fund balance between seven to 10% of budgeted expenditures. Yeah. So we're over that. We're we're in excess of well, what did we say? We're about eleven point two percent, you know, in the proposed budget. And again, that eleven point two percent is reflective of the where is my other document? Isn't isn't the eleven point two that's proposed, right? It's eleven point two of the hundred and thirteen yeah. seven number? That's right. Page A one. That's that's more than a million dollars though. No. 11.2. Yeah, I'm being careful. I mean, I, you know, I need to there's a few, there's a, there's a, a few moving parts here. Yeah. I'm being, yeah. I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to oversell anything. Okay. I just, I just took the 113 million and figured what, what 11.21 percent is. But that. It's 12, the, it's 12.5, right? 
I got 12.75. Yeah, okay. So when you when you put the budget together, the proposed budget, the, the eleven point two one is really not cast in stone. We don't know what that's going to be, right? No, and it assumes it assumes no uh, no lapsing surplus on either revenues or expenditures. Right. It's just right. taking it's just taking the audited balance from almost a year ago. Right, right. And deducting from that what you appropriated for this budget year. Okay. And then yeah, that's 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 what's going to be left to work with compared to the proposed budget. And then if we're able to reduce the hundred and thirteen million by some number, then that's gonna change that. Yeah, that'll that's another one of the moving pieces. And in insurance, you're feeling comfortable. There is a savings. Do you have a like an idea of what that could be? In insurance? Mm-hmm. Oh, on the med or, um, medical savings. The medical. The medical so the uh, Chris Monroe's three-year uh, estimation of savings is seven hundred and fifty thousand um, dollars. I think it would be safe to take a quarter of a million, you know, assuming we're, we're competent, it'll be adopted, you know, no issue with the unions. I think it's safe to, uh, to take a quarter of a million. So two things. So Chris's projection. So Matt and I both used 2% above uh, last year's budget. Um, Chris is projecting that the costs, if we stayed with Anthem, are going to be flat to to slightly negative. So there's a little bit of savings there, and then on top of that would be the move to Cigna, which we would reduce. Um, I think I think it's safe to do a you know a quarter of a million split between the town and the board of ed. You know, based on probably based on employees that are that are carrying coverage. So okay. call that call that two fifty plus. Two fifty plus. So in this scenario, we've got only two hundred thousand. So realistically, we could put in two fifty and be comfortable. Yeah.
here's a minor one, but Mike, with you, dual role with IT. Uh, Fire Marshal's new iPad. Um, do we have any other iPads around in IT? I mean, we look, I mean, it's, a, it's only $1,200, but if- Well, couldn't you just use mine? I never took one. Yeah, we're always, you know, we're always deploying, redeploying used equipment anywhere we can. Okay. I don't know what the current inventory looks like on those. Well, that's one. I'm just looking through some notes on that and scratch my head when I'm thinking about iPads. I would imagine we have some. You know, the reality is with equipment, I mean, that equipment budget that's in IT is, you know, as I've said before, we try to hold that money till we get into the second half of the year, at least even later, um, and really see what our, you know, we, we address critical needs, but we wait and see, you know, what our, what our greatest needs are and deploy the money that way. Um, that said, you know, we're pleased to have the budget that we have there, but it's not, it's not like some budgets that are, you know, it's not like a, like there's maintenance contracts that have to be paid for. It's, it's, it's discretionary and we could certainly, you know, if you wanted to take the money out of fire marshal for the iPads, we'd figure out, a, you know, we certainly we'd figure out a way out of the IT equipment budget to, to make it work. And then would you, hmm, it's probably on the other spreadsheet, actuals for IT. Um, do we have that actuals on the projection? Yep, I'm looking. For IT. Yeah, so we have, If you, I don't know if you're looking at that, IT, the equipment line. Uh, I haven't gotten it. We're, what page is it on? It's on the, actually the first page, page one of nine. You're looking at this one? Yeah, it looks like it. Oh, IT right down below town attorney. Got yeah. it. Now I got to go figure out which one you want me to look at. FY21 actual <laughs> or the FY21 projection. It's it would be the FY21 projection and the projected variance. So so when we did this, if you look at the last line of IT, there was about 12 12,600 unexpended. And, and we just assumed for this exercise that we spend that out. Um, you know, I, don't, I mean, there's eighteen dollars there, whatever that means. Um, but again, that's you know, we've probably spent a little bit of that since the end of March. But you know, that's that's what's available there. You know, which is, you know, some years we have more than that. You know, to be honest, because we've, um, you know, we've rolled some of that money over into the IT reserve, but. Uh, we did, you know, early in the year, you know, last summer, we were still buying laptops and, and kind of dealing with people working remotely and, and all of that. But the total for IT is 87,769. Yeah. 
Is that your projected savings? Yep, a lot of that comes from the, the you know, we've got two vacant positions. Yeah, up top, yeah. Okay, and then we have them filled in this budget. Uh, yeah. IT technician is new and the info specialist is new. Those would be new employees, not new position, yeah. correct? Right. Yep. Okay. And I dare ask the question, we need those, huh, huh Mike? Yeah, desperately. Well, let's see, we were, up, we were without uh, email for most of the day today. We. And that wasn't to, anything to do with. And it had nothing to do with us, but he had the troubleshoot. Yeah. Yeah. There's a whole list of backlogged IT work. Okay. Well, still there is savings there with new personnel coming in. At a lesser salary. Okay. Anything else for anybody to discuss? We'll keep chipping away. What do you want to do for a plan moving forward, uh, Mayor? Probably well, I think today you guys have caucus, chats or not. What do you want to do? Yeah, I think um, obviously we want to get any updated information tomorrow from Gary. Um, we'll probably, we're not meeting again this week, right, Gary? No, we should probably figure out a plan on that. Again, any information that I have tomorrow will probably be short and sweet. This is how much we're getting, not so much how we're going to be able to use it. So you're probably going to want to build in some time to have that discussion or give me time to at least absorb it, have conversations with the state get back to you with recommendations and try to answer or get questions from you. And we're meeting on the 17th, the next council meeting. Regularly scheduled council meeting, yep. Okay. Well, Matt, if you guys want, if your folks want to get together, talk about some items and some either possible revenue sources. Um, and then whatever guidance we get from Gary, have that, you know, parlay into your calculations on, you know, what you guys are thinking. We'll probably caucus this weekend, definitely for the um, council meeting, but we will probably caucus the, uh, the budget as well. Um, makes sense. Do you want to? There's probably no real reason for any other deliberations for this week. Um, then we'll, yeah, why don't we caucus ourselves for this weekend, talk about the budget. And then maybe after the meeting on the 17th, come up with uh, a possible date for future or further deliberations on, you know, where we want to get to and how we can get there and possibly vote on a budget the week of the 24th at the earliest. Sure. I mean, you guys are obviously in the majority, so you're going to set sort of the parameters and we're happy to have that conversation as, and you know what, I've, we've worked privately before, so I think you know the routine. 
Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything else from anybody? Any input? Hearing none. Okay. We'll close this deliberations and then uh, figure out some game plan for uh, how to use whatever we're allocated. Sounds good. good. Sounds good. Sounds good. Sounds like a motion right. in there. Yep. Motion so, to adjourn. So moved. Second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. Ayes have it. Okay. Keep working at it. Take care, guys. Thanks, everyone.